before I uh, begin my uh, talk, uh, on behalf of the, all the organizers, I'd like to thank all the participants and speakers for participating in this, uh, in this conference and contributing. I hope you will have a pleasant and fruitful stay. Uh, please don't hesitate to inform us if you have any difficulties. Uh, we'll try our best to uh, make your stay uh, pleasant. Also, I'd like to thank the director of this institute, ICTS, uh, for accepting our proposal, which was made uh, over two years ago, and uh, extending all support, including financial support, uh, for this conference. And we have this excellent facility for this conference. OK. So now I'll start uh, my talk, which uh, some aspect of space fractional quantum mechanics, which we have started uh, very recently. And I'm not an expert of this. So my uh, motivation of giving this talk is to have a better understanding of this subject. So when we calculate the amplitudes uh, in quantum mechanics by Feynman path integral approach, uh, we generally connect the initial point to the final point by uh, all possible paths, and which are generally considered those paths as the Brownian uh, path, which is a Wigner stochastic process, or basically uh, Markov or Gaussian or normal stochastic process. And in statistical description, these leads to a normal diffusion equation. And there are various generalizations, and one of them is that uh, generalize this Brownian path by Levy flight path, which based on the stable probability distribution and developed by Levy, uh, which also followed the generalized uh, central limit theorem. Instead of uh, uh, this central limit theorem, it follows some uh, extended central limit theorem. That, uh, this Levy flight paths are basically random work in which the step length have a probability distribution with heavy tail. And Levy flight paths are very useful in study various branches of physics, including anomalous diffusion, turbulence, chaotic dynamics, fractal, financial dimension, uh, financial dynamics, etc., and many others. <clears throat> Quantum mechanics. Uh, replacing by this Brownian path by Levy flight paths are known as this fractional quantum mechanics. And I'll talk some of the aspect of uh, this uh, space fractional quantum mechanics, and particularly based on our study on uh, Hartman effect, uh, which uh, says that uh, tunneling time is independent of the barrier width or sufficiently thick barrier. And uh, central theme of this conference is for non-Hermitian operators. So naturally, we'll consider non-Hermitian extension of this space fractional quantum mechanics uh, by considering a couple of examples uh, of complex potential. And then uh, this complex scattering has some typical characteristic, which we'll discuss in this framework. OK, here is the outline of my uh, talk, is that uh, uh, I'll start with some brief description of space fractional quantum mechanics, and then uh, we'll discuss hartman fletcher uh, effect in, in uh, usual quantum mechanics, and then we'll go to the space fractional quantum mechanics. Then we'll consider this uh, non-Hermitian extension of this space fractional quantum mechanics by considering a couple of examples. and. Particularly in the scattering, the spectral singularity and coherent perfect absorption are interesting features. So we'll discuss those two features in this framework with the examples. Finally, I'll conclude my talk uh, by providing, uh, by summarizing and providing the future outlook or possible direction. This talk will be based on two of our recent paper with my student, Mohammed Hassan, who is also participating and the talk yesterday on superpotential. And this one of the paper, Tunneling in Space Fractional Quantum Mechanics, uh, is published in PLA in this year. And this is under consideration. You can have in archive numbers. OK. So Feynman path integral approach, when we calculate the amplitude from some initial time 
uh, TA and position XA, that two uh, final some uh, time, T, T and at position XB. So this is the description, this kernel or amplitude. And, and this is called this Feynman uh, path integral measure, which we calculate this integration over all intermediate uh, points and, and this expression. So this is only this major part which you can. Now, if you consider that instead of uh, Brownian paths, if you consider Levy flight path, which leads to the fractional quantum mechanics, this major, which is also referred as Levy major, is changes by uh, this kind of expression, where d alpha is the generalized diffusion coefficient, l alpha is Levy function, which is generally expect, expressed in terms of some complicated mathematical function, Fox h function, which I'm not going to talk about. And this uh, alpha is Levy index, which varies, is considered in this uh, work from one to two. And uh, two is the limiting case for which we will have the usual quantum mechanics. So when alpha equal, this Feynman path integral is uh, it's a Brownian path. Yeah, this, this Feynman path integral that uh, when you uh, connect from this uh, initial point to final point, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, alpha equal to two is the usual quantum mechanics, and this Levy distribution will go to the Gaussian distribution. So uh, alpha equal to two is the limiting case. Levy distribution will go to the Gaussian distribution, and this Levy flight path will be the Brown path, and fractional quantum mechanics will be the usual quantum. <clears throat> and in momentum representation, the Levy uh, major uh, can be calculated as uh, this. Uh, where this is the generalized diffusion function. And in this expression, this j varies from 1 to n. But uh, OK, it, it should be 0 to n. And with the x0 denoted as xa and xp, which is the initial and final point. The energy in this uh, approach is expressed as this diffusion, generalized diffusion function and mod p to the power alpha. And since we are interested in uh, tunneling effect and this non-hermitian extension will go to this instead of path integral formulation we'll see what is this effect in this Schrodinger equation due to this modification and all these things is a uh, highly cited paper by Leskin you'll find this PLA 2000. So uh, this Schrodinger equation uh, will have uh, this fractional Hamiltonian H alpha and which is uh, written in terms of rich fractional derivative minus a square del to the power alpha by two. And this uh, will have this structure for a potential V, X, and T. And rich fractional derivative uh, of the wave function uh, is generally uh, understand in terms of Fourier transformation of this wave function. So uh, this is definition that when this rich uh, functional derivative acts on this, it's, it's uh, in Fourier form, it will, when this uh, Fourier transform of the wave function can be uh, given by uh, this, so usual inverse Fourier transformation. Now, if the potential, uh, this is not working. This is still 34, how can, <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, so, uh, mm, so this time independent, if, the, uh, if you have a uh, time independent potential, uh, then uh, um, you can have a time independent fractional Schrodinger equation, like this, where uh, e, uh, is the energy of the particle, and you can have a time evolution of this function in the usual manner. Some of the typical characteristic in this fractional quantum mechanics, hermeticity. Um, this fractional Hamiltonian is Hermitian uh, because of this rich uh, fractional derivative has this uh, integration by parse uh, rules. So this is the usual definition. And you can have the H alpha, which has this uh, is Hermitian. Uh, if you have a parity symmetric potential, 
uh, then your uh, v minus x equal to vx, then this parity operator also commute with this uh, fractional Hamiltonian. Uh, and this one can show by, because of this result. And it has the usual continuity equation, del rho del t, plus divergence of the probability current density equal to zero. But this has, the rho has the usual definition, but current density as written in terms of one over alphas, psi v operator and psi star plus this quantity. Where v operator is calculated by taking the uh, commutator of the position vector with respect to Hamiltonian. Now Hamiltonian has a uh, different structure, so this v operator can be calculated. And you have a very nice uh, uh, paper by Leskin again in 2010 and elaborating all these uh, properties and more details. Okay, so now since we are going to discuss about the uh, tunneling time, uh, then uh, we'll go to the tunneling time or the Hartman effect in usual quantum mechanics. So this is time evolution of a localized wave packet around this H cut zero. This and when it passes through the transmit through the barrier, uh, this will pick up uh, this transmission uh, uh, coefficient and and uh, phase. So this in stationary phase method, the tunneling time is calculated by optimizing this quantity. And for a, and, and this calculate to be tau equal to this. Uh, is the, this is the phase of the transmission coefficient. And, and uh, this is the width of the barrier time divided by this. So for a square uh, barrier, uh, one can calculate in usual quantum mechanics uh, this. And if you, uh, if you look at this, we observe that uh, when the width of the barrier uh, going to zero, this tunneling time uh, going to zero, which is expected. There is no barrier, so no tunneling time. But uh, interesting thing is that when V going to infinite, so if you have an infinite barrier, tunneling time is fixed, and this is well-known Hartman effect, and this in some specific unit you can write like this. Okay, so this graphically will represent uh, this, so tunneling time versus the barrier width. Uh, so far, experimentally, this region has not been achieved. We have a 10 to the power minus 18 second measurement, auto second measurement. We still get the saturation part. Okay, so this also has been generalized for the complex barrier, single complex barrier, this work you can see. And the series of uh, complex barrier, uh, com barriers are, complex barriers are realized in terms of uh, coupling between elastic and inelastic challenge. Uh, and there are various characteristics, uh, and saturation is obtained in different conditions. Okay, so now we go to the uh, barrier uh, tunneling in press fractional quantum mechanics. So now we solve this uh, Schrodinger equation for this potential, uh, and, and uh, we obtain this usual solution uh, where uh, x is the, you have a barrier between uh, 0 to b. So uh, when x less than 0, we have this solution, this usual standard solution, when k alpha and k alpha bar are determined by this uh, expression, which has alpha as a Now this uh, transmission coefficient is calculated uh, for this, uh, which is like this, and these parameters mu, uh, epsilon, etc., are defined like this. So if you have energy less than the barrier height, and this transmission uh, coefficient is like this. And k prime alpha is written in terms of this. And we can calculate this phase of this, uh, where theta is the phase for that uh, uh, denominator. Uh, of transmission uh, amplitude, so this phase, and then this we have to calculate. So we calculate this, and and then it is uh, uh, okay. So this uh, I'll skip this calculation, and and then we have this expression of tunneling time uh, can be expressed like this. And if we further simplify it then it will, will find that is a B dependent part, which this tunneling time, if you take the B going to infinity, then there will be a B dependent part, independent part. So naturally the, um, uh, this hartmann fletcher effect is destroyed because of this B dependent part. So these are the B dependent part and independent part is, uh, so no hartmann fletcher effect if you consider the best fractional 
quantum mechanics which uh, is graphically represented by this. So here we have tunneling time and this is the width of the barrier and these different plots are for different values of alpha. So alpha equal to two, we have the saturation, but when alpha less than two in between that range, then tunneling time actually decreases. However, this uh, tunneling time, uh, this is recovered uh, in alpha equal to two limit. So if you uh, put this alpha equal to two limit, then you'll find that again, we have uh, this tunneling time independent of the barrier width and normal hartman fletcher effect. And this work is reported in this year. And Okay, so now I come to the second part of this, of my talk which is non-Hermitian phase uh, fraction quantum mechanics. Okay, so uh, we consider uh, this uh, complex potential where this is complex, uh, this parameter in front of this delta potential is complex, and we calculate the um, transfer matrix for this potential, and which is this element of this uh, transfer matrix is given by this, which have this diffusion coefficient and alpha is appearing. And K alpha uh, is defined, uh, is noted as usual uh, with uh, this, I talk about the space fractional quantum mechanics. That... Okay, so uh, we have spectral singularity if this as uh, we have uh, seen in Professor Mustafa this lecture today and yesterday. Uh, that uh, this zero will go correspond to the spectral singularity. So uh, that means we need to solve this equation for the real values of. Uh, so the solution is uh, can be given uh, like this, and and this will be real. This this energy expression will be real when the, this is the complex part. So when phi equal to minus pi by two, so this will uh, give you the real solution. So if you have a real solution and then this uh, will, uh, this values definition, we use that phi equal to minus pi by two to get this value. So this, uh, we have this uh, solution. And now if we define a quantity F alpha rho, uh, which is nothing but that, uh, which is the spectral singular point in uh, phase fractional quantum mechanics uni unit of, uh, spectral singular uh, energy at alpha equal to 2. So this is the um, spectral singularity at alpha equal to 2 and this is spectral singularity. So we calculate this ratio and we see the behavior of this function uh, to know that uh, effect of space fractional quantum mechanics on these spectral singular points. So we'll find that if rho is greater than 2, that uh, uh, rho uh, which is in the parameter, uh, in the potential, then uh, for alpha less than uh, um, two, we can always have uh, this is more, E alpha SS will be greater than ESS, and we have that uh, spectral singular point is blue shifted. So uh, here we have written that. Um, and there is, uh, if you go back to this, and then we'll find that uh, uh, that it is more, but it can go up to infinity. Uh, in this limiting uh, case, we can show it for rho greater than two. This can go to alpha going to one plus from the positive side, from the two to one side, then this expression can go to infinity. So in principle, we can have spectral singularity at any energy E greater than ESS in non Hermitian space fractional quantum mechanics with suitably chosen Levy index alpha. And according to the limiting case given by this uh, uh, earlier equation, which uh, this 49, uh, we can have this, uh, uh, this we, we can check that this for rho greater than 2, this at alpha going to 1 plus, this will divert. So this is, so this uh, we plot uh, this function, log of this function, uh, uh, the ratio of the two uh, spectral singular um, uh, energy of for spectral singularity, one is the usual quantum mechanics, another one this versus alpha. And we find that uh, 
at this ratio when they are equal alpha equal to 2 they are equal and log of uh, 1 will be 0 and and but uh, we get this uh, all are elevated so this we consider um, so the, this row getter then for different values of row for these different curves. So we conclude that for S, the spectral singularity energy is blue shifted compared to the spectral singularity energy for alpha equal to. And here we uh, plot the uh, uh, log of this function and negative of it. And here we consider if you uh, look at this expression of where we define the f, there we find that there is a limiting value of rho which is less than 4 by e for that this goes to 0. So we consider rho less uh, in this range less than 4 by uh, epsilon and then this is negative and we find that uh, energy is decreasing. So we have uh, spectral singular points with less energy compared to the usual quantum mechanics and in that situation we have uh, this is uh, red shifted. Okay, this is um, uh, directly we have shown the different energy and in this uh, we have plotted this uh, transmission and reflection coefficient for different values of alpha. So for first these solid lines are uh, for red and this uh, is for alpha equal to 2 for T and R log of T and so we have spectral singularity here. But when you reduce the alpha for this broken line or dotted line, it is shifted for more energy and we have blue shifted. And this is for uh, this potential. Similarly, we have this red shifted where rho is less than 1.4 by 4 by E that uh, restriction. So for various, uh, for rho equal to 1 for various values of alpha and this is the uh, spectral singularity at uh, usual quantum mechanics uh, and, and then it is less energy and then you have red C. <clears throat> so now we consider another uh, example uh, on this which is uh, uh, mm, this barrier potential, complex barrier potential. So we consider V1, V2 which are real and, and this potential V1 plus I V2 and again we calculate uh, this uh, elements of the transfer matrix uh, in this expression and and we calculate uh, the uh, spectral singularity and uh, coherent perfect absorption for this potential uh, for um, uh, uh, in this space fractional quantum mechanics so uh, this is the condition for cpa and, and we'll have, a, uh, it is extremely difficult to calculate this, uh, that uh, spectral singularity condition is that and which is uh, in, in usual quantum mechanics, one can solve this analytically, but uh, in, in it's difficult to solve this in space fractional quantum mechanics. And, and we study this numerically and uh, we, uh, by changing, by noting the variation of uh, transmission and reflection and uh, it is shown graphically. Again, we find that uh, under uh, uh, condition on the parameters, we have this uh, uh, spectral singularity is blue shifted as alpha decreases. Okay, so here we have the plot for spectral singularity. Uh, this is plot uh, this um, reflection and transmission versus uh, energy. And for um, A, B, C, D graphs are various values of uh, alpha. This is uh, for usual quantum mechanics, which uh, we have the um, uh, spectral singularity in this energy. And you can find that uh, uh, it is blue shifted when alpha is decreases. So this is alpha. Uh, this one is for 1.99. This is 1.98 and so on. So again, we find this is blue shifted. Uh, sub peaks, uh, we observe that uh, this in the transmission and reflection coefficient, there is oscillation around the spectral singular point. So, those we call the uh, sub oscillation and uh, this sub peaks. And so, we observe that the sub peaks for E greater than E SS alpha equal to 2 grow in amplitude as alpha decreases, uh, still, the simultaneous maxima, which is that uh, spectral singularity. Uh, and uh, 
appears. So this has been um, demonstrated graphically. I'll show the graph. And again, uh, from the graph, it is evident that subpeaks for uh, E greater than the usual uh, spectral singular energy for uh, in, in non Hermitian standard quantum mechanics uh, with this alpha uh, less than two in, in will compare this in specific Okay, so here uh, we have shown how this uh, um, subpeaks uh, uh, converted to the spectral singular points. Uh, this is a three dimensional plot. So this is your alpha and this is energy and this is the um, uh, values of T and R. Okay, so this the first, first line is for alpha equal to two, so the usual uh, quantum mechanics. And then we have this uh, is the spectral singularity. Now, then uh, this is red is for, uh, um, red is for uh, um, reflection and T uh, blue is uh, for uh, um, transmission. So uh, once we reduce the alpha, the next sub peak uh, grows and it coincide with the T and R coincide. And, and eventually the sub peak develop into a spectral singular one. And similarly for the others. Okay, and then uh, uh, this is the similar uh, graph for more values of alpha. So this alpha is from 1.9222. Uh, and here it is evident that if you reduce the alpha, the sub peaks will uh, increase. Uh, for increasing energy, of course, and, and, and this will uh, coincide with this, uh, they will, uh, T and R will be uh, simultaneously have maxima and that will develop to the spectral singularity. Similarly, for uh, the lowering the other side also, we have the oscillation around this and other side also for less energy, but uh, that also, those sub peaks also can develop and can coincide but for alpha greater than two, and we have not, uh, because, because whole base fractional quantum mechanics is formulated uh, for um, between alpha uh, one to two. So we are not interested in that part and we have not. Okay, so, and this is the thing I explained that uh, uh, space fraction, uh, in, in space fractional uh, quantum mechanics, you can have the spectral singularity at different values that uh, if you have the oscillation around the uh, transmission and reflection points and which will, uh, when you reduce the alpha and will uh, eventually, uh, um, the sub peaks will be uh, the main peak and it will be the spectral singularity. Okay, uh, and, and it, it, this graph shows a close view for the first sub peak around the spectral singular point, how it developed to the spectral singular point in this three dimensional plot. So this is, uh, this is T, this is R, and then first sub peak is, uh, they are having the coincidence and they developed. Also, we can have the um, uh, oscillation of uh, R and T uh, with the various values of alpha. This, in this graph, we have uh, shown. Okay, now uh, regarding the coherent perfect absorption for uh, uh, this uh, uh, barrier potential uh, uh, in phase fractional quantum mechanics, so this equation uh, has to be solved or this, uh, this determinant of that uh, matrix which we learned. So in this, uh, if you denote this as C and then we make again the numerical study by plotting log C uh, or log one over C. So uh, for spectral, uh, for uh, coherent perfect absorption, this C uh, going to uh, zero. So this will be instead of minima, uh, deep minima will have a blow up. So, so sometimes this is this three dimensional plot. We have used log of one over mod C and then this will have a minima, but this will have maximum. Okay, so this uh, graph shows the deep minima. So these are CPA points and, and for various values of uh, alpha, these graphs. So this is the usual graph and this then we reduce the alpha for this graph and we can see that this was around 70s and this is around uh, uh, just below 80. This is also and this cross 80. So this energy increases. So even uh, that CPA, is also blue shifted. 
Uh, and uh, this is variation of C at different energies uh, for ABCD. So you have different graph. There is a uh, typo. This is not uh, E, but it should be alpha for various alpha. This axis is alpha and this axis is log C. So this uh, oscillation around uh, um, deep minima has been demonstrated in this graph. And, and it has uh, more and more dense at the vicinity of CPA, so in this graph also there is a typographical, this should be alpha instead of E. E, uh, we have considered fixed E, uh, more and more energy. So all these graphs are for different energies. And if you have high energy and low alpha, then you will have dense sub-peaks around the uh, CPA. This I think we talk about this. Uh, so, uh, okay, so we see the standard case of alpha equal to two. Uh, log 1 over C carp has sub peaks similar to the spectral singularity and with energy E on both sides of the maxima. And it observed that sub peaks for alpha equal to 2 occurs for uh, E greater than this, develop maxima for lower values of alpha. Okay, this in this uh, nicely demonstrated in this three dimensional graph. So, development of CPA for alpha less than 2 over this alpha and E space. Uh, the range of alpha in this graph uh, is taken from 1.96 to 2, and this this is the color. This shows the amplitude, um, the magnitude of the amplitude. So this is uh, the first uh, uh, CPA. This, this this graph we have plotted log 1 over C. So instead of deep minima, we have peak, and 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 this is the first sub peak is converted to a CPA uh, in this. Uh, and then if you further lower alpha, then this one, further al lower alpha, then this one, and so on. Okay, so uh, since we don't have uh, much time, so uh, I, I'm almost through also. So we have uh, observed that sub peaks for E less than this uh, develop CPA for some values alpha greater than 2, but uh, alpha greater than 2 we have not considered, so we are not discussing. Further similar uh, sub peaks with E around CPA, there are sub oscillation uh, with alpha in the neighborhood of CPA. And it is noticed that CPA with lesser alpha values have more dense sub minima. This is similar to the um, spectral singularity in, uh, in with around CPA. So this is again that uh, graph, uh, similar graph, but for a longer range, alpha equal to 1.8 to uh, 2. And, and this uh, converting of this uh, sub minima to a uh, so now I come to the conclusion part of this uh, talk. So we uh, considered space fractional quantum mechanics by replacing Brownian path by Levy light paths, and and this uh, I mentioned that it has uh, helpful in many branches of physics like fractals, anomalous uh, diffusion, etc. And we discuss hartmann fletcher effect in the, the uh, quantum, uh, for quantum tunneling by stationary phase method. And we found that no Hartmann effect in space fractional quantum mechanics. That means the saturation uh, is not there, but the tunneling time decays in, uh, with decay value of Levy index alpha. And results also demonstrate for one barrier uh, uh, complex, and we have checked for multi barriers. So this uh, tunneling time case, so this uh, for one barrier, but we have also checked uh, in case of multi barriers. Hartman uh, effect uh, restore uh, when the Levy path is replaced by Brownian path, that means that uh, instead of uh, uh, distribution with uh, uh, flat tail, if you have a normal Gaussian distribution, uh, then we'll have that uh, Hartman Fletcher effect restored. And the second uh, problem we consider in the non-Hermitian extension of space fractional quantum mechanics uh, for two complex potential. One is the uh, Dirac delta potential with uh, imaginary uh, strength and the complex barrier potential. The scattering properties have discussed, particularly in the context of spectral singularity and the coherent property of absorption in, in uh, space fractional quantum mechanics. And non-Hermitian space fractional quantum mechanics system have more flexible for SS and uh, the spectral singularity and the coherent proper absorption and display some new features we discussed. So blue or red shifted of spectral singularity depending on the parameter in the potential for the um, delta potential uh, observed as alpha decreases for both the potential uh, um, 
okay, and have been shown uh, for the complex. There is some typo here. Uh, blue shift has been shown for um, spectral uh, singularity and CPU energy with decreasing alpha. The possibility of uh, multi, uh, multiple spectral singularity and CPA for non Hermitian uh, for different values uh, instead of multiple, we should write a different uh, position uh, of is in, in non Hermitian phase fractional quantum. Sub peaks are converted uh, as you lower the values of alpha, sub peaks are converted into spectral singularity or CPA as in the case. So it is shown that reflection and transmission amplitude are oscillatory near the spectral singular or CPA point, and it is found that this oscillation eventually developed to this when you lower this up. This is the reference for this paper, and and then uh, this future direction. This uh, uh, this is completely new in the sense of non-Hermitian uh, um, PT symmetric system. So this is one possible direction people can consider the PT symmetric non-Hermitian extension of space fractional quantum and for a consistent quantum theory. The tunneling time for multiple complex barrier uh, in space fractional quantum mechanics also can be investigated, which this we are doing, and then study the uh, Hartman effect. Uh, this year. Thank you. So now we can take some questions. A uh, very nice talk. Um, so I was wondering whether there, uh, you you are aware of any uh, experimental efforts to realize this uh, fractional uh, quantum mechanics? Yeah, fractional quantum mechanics uh, is uh, uh, is there for a long time. There are I don't know about any experiment, but we are doing in that uh, non Hermitian extension or tunneling effect we are studying. But this is useful for studying fractals or anomalous uh, diffusion and other places. Um, so I think uh, I heard somebody talk about, um, so for example, if you have a very simple system or in condensed matter system, if my uh, mass um, somehow depends on my momentum, and then they are calling that some version of uh, fractional quantum mechanics. Uh, do you agree or? Uh, that I don't know, but uh, yesterday we had talk uh, from uh, Professor Lakshman that uh, momentum dependent mass so that may be related to nonlinear system. So I don't know whether it is always related to fractional system, or not, but I don't think there is a correlation. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you define the fractional derivative in terms of Fourier transformation. There is another definition in terms of Cauchy integral. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you find a residue of a a function with multiple degree of uh, singularity, you know, not simple pole, but uh, higher order pole. That can also, do the, these two definitions agree? Uh, that I don't know, uh, that other definition I... I... Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, hi. Uh... So, so a fr fractional uh, operator is uh, this is non-local, right? So when you are considering boundaries, uh, shouldn't uh, is the definition okay? Yeah, that that is why we consider in terms of uh, the momentum. Uh, so you have to go to the Fourier space and. Okay. Any any other question? I just noticed that you find speed to singularities when the imaginary part of the potential is negative. Shouldn't be they just opposite? Delta function potential? Oh, well, for both delta and barrier potential. Because if the imaginary part of the potential is negative, it's a low C system, can't give you speed to singularity, it will give you CPA. Yeah. But you're getting speed to singularity for negative imaginary part. Which I don't, I don't think it's possible. Uh, this, uh, yeah, so we consider this is uh, imaginary. Yes, but negative or positive? It should be positive for respect to singularity. 
but you made it negative. Yeah, so rho is positive. Yeah, you will not have spectral symmetry. I mean, this would be a lossy system. Mm -hmm. You will get CPA, but not the spectral singularity. I think there is a sign error. Okay, okay, maybe you'll we'll check it. So, any other comment or question? So, if not, then let us thank the let us thank the both the speakers of this session for excellent talks.